so now let's start with the regulation of volume and concentration of body fluids first of all we will see the mechanism defending ecf tonicity so first of all if osmotic pressure of the plasma increases that means if the osmolality of the ecf increases it will stimulate the osmoreceptor which are uh, located in the anterior hypothalamus and it will also increase adh secretion from the posterior pituitary what is adh anti diuretic hormone means it will prevent diuresis it will prevent loss of water from the body so why it will prevent loss of water from the body because osmolality has increased and we need more uh, water in our body to decrease the osmolality so uh, what will osmoreceptor do they will increase the thirst and uh, increasing thirst will increase the water intake and this adh will lead to water retention so both of these will lead to dilution of ecf so which solves our problem so this was about the ecf tonicity so now uh, it's that uh, in the hypothalamus there are, uh, there are osmoreceptor cell there are peripheral uh, volume receptor which all function uh, in the thirst mechanism uh the next topic is role of adh so we saw that adh leads to water retention so decrease in extracellular fluid volume will stimulate adh secretion so what are the major stimuli for adh secretion first is uh that if there is 1 to 2% increase in osmolality it will directly stimulate the osmoreceptor in the anterior hypothalamus but if there is 10% decrease in the effective circulating blood volume it will decrease the firing from beta receptor so these both stimulus will increase the adh secretion and what what does adh do we did in the last chapter that uh, in dct there are aquaporin 2 and adh increase the pore size of aquaporin 2 which is present in dct and collecting tubule thus the permeability increases and there will be solute free water reabsorption and this will decrease the water excretion uh, so next is angiotensin 2 uh, we did role of angiotensin 2 in the first video itself uh, so revising it angiotensin 2 uh, when will uh, it is formed from renin and uh, we did various stimulus for renin so uh, the main stimulus is decrease in effective circulating blood volume so angiotensin 2 function it is done uh, vasoconstrictor effect it has a pressure effect it stimulates secretion of aldosterone which will increase sodium reabsorption then it will stimulate adh and then it will stimulate the thirst mechanism this all will increase the ecf volume therefore angiotensin 2 plays a role in body response to hypovolemia uh, so the next topic is atrial natriuretic peptide ANP is a group of polypeptide which is produced by the atrial muscle cell and its main function is to increase the excretion of sodium it is uh, so uh, if it secretes sodium so when it will be secreted when sodium chloride intake is increased or when extracellular fluid volume is increased so when the volume increase it will stimulate the atrial stretch receptor which will increase uh, secretion of ANP and what is the function of anp so if anp is increasing the extracellular fluid volume it will increase the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries so if hydrostatic pressure is increased it will lead to increase in gfr and as we did in the first chapter itself increase in gfr leads to natriuresis okay so uh, one function of anp is efferent arterial relaxation and we did that hydrostatic pressure increases if the pressure increases uh, there will be also uh, natriuresis we did uh, what we need to do is diuresis so if the pressure is increasing renin secretion will decrease there will be no angiotensin 2 so there will be no stimulus for adh secretion adh will decrease which will lead to diuresis uh, now we need uh, need to see the principal buffers in the body fluids in the whole blood the main buffer is hemoglobin then we have proteins and then we have carbonic acid system in the interstitial fluid we have only carbonic acid bicarbonate system and in the interstitial fluid or in the intracellular fluid we have proteins and phosphate system 
सो नाउ लेट्स सी वेरियस टाइप ऑफ डिहाइड्रेशन एंड ओवरहाइड्रेशन फर्स्टली वी विल सी डिहाइड्रेशन सो इफ देर इज आइसोस्मोटिक डिहाइड्रेशन वट डज दिस मीन्स वेन एवर देर इज अ टर्म डिहाइड्रेशन इट मीन्स दैट वॉटर इज बींग लॉज फ्रॉम ई सी एफ सो इफ इट इज आइसो ओस्मोटिक डिहाइड्रेशन इट मीन्स दैट आइसो ओस्मोटिक फ्लूड इज लॉज फ्रॉम ई सी एफ सो वट हैपन्स दैट इनिशियली लॉस विल बी रिप्लेस फ्रॉम इंटस्टिशियल फ्लूड सो देर विल बी नो मेजर चेंज इन ई सी एफ ओस्मोलैलिटी एंड देर विल बी नो चेंज इन आई सी एफ वॉल्यूम it's just that some fluid is lost from ecf so only ecf will be decreased when does this happen isosmat osmotic means blood blood ya plasma ka loss ho raha hai so ye kab hota hai hemorrhage mein aur burns mein uh, vomiting and diarrhea okay then we have hyperosmotic hyperosmotic means that there is a loss of only water from the ecf ओके सो फ्लूड लॉज फ्रॉम प्लाज्मा विच विल इंक्रीज द प्लाज्मा ऑस्मोलैलिटी इन द ई सी एफ बिकॉज ओनली वॉटर इज गेटिंग लॉस नो सोल्यूट्स आर गेटिंग लॉस दैट्स वाई इट इज कॉल्ड हाइपर ऑस्मोटिक लॉस सो फ्लूड लॉज फ्रॉम प्लाज्मा सो प्लाज्मा विल ड्रो फ्लूड फ्रॉम इंटस्टिशियल स्पेस सो ऑस्मोलैलिटी ऑफ द इंटस्टिशियल स्पेस विल इंक्रीज सो इट विल ड्रो फ्लूड फ्रॉम आई सी एफ देर फोर बोथ वॉल्यूम डिक्रीज विल इंक्रीज इन ऑस्मोलैलिटी ऑफ द बोथ कंपार्टमेंट सो दिस विल हैपन इफ वी if if there is a water deficit if we decrease its intake diabetes alcoholism and sweating in hypoosmotic uh, dehydration uh, the ecf volume will decrease and osmolality of both the compartment will increase but icf volume will increase uh, this is the case in edison disease in this only the solute is lost so renal salt of a uh, loss of sodium chloride so only if the if only the solute is lost so uh, there will be increase in the volume of intracellular fluid so now uh, there will be overhydration so overhydration is in isosmotic it is just the opposite in isosmotic it is uh, if we administer iso isotonic solution then the ecf volume will increase in hyperosmotic overhydration what happens plasma osmolality increases so water sh- uh, shift into the plasma so plasma volume will increase so solute will uh, diffuse to interstitial space so water will move out of the icf so uh, so intracellular fluid volume will decrease and ecf volume will increase and both osmolality will increase in the hyperosmotic initially plasma volume increase which decrease the osmolality so water will go to interstitial space so then water will go to icf so therefore both volume increase and both osmolality will decrease it happens in syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion uh, so now in acid base imbalance or acidosis or uh, alkalosis we need to remember a simple logic right if if we talk about respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis it is always due to change in pco2 partial pressure of co2 if it increases it means uh, h plus increases and it is called acidosis and if pco2 decreases it is called respiratory alkalosis but if we uh, talk about metabolic acidosis or metabolic al- alkalosis we talk in the term of uh, plasma uh, we talk in the term of arterial ph or plasma ga- bicarbonate uh, secretion if h plus increases and bicarbonate decreases it will be called metabolic acidosis and alkalosis will be vice versa okay so uh, what will be the uh, you know uh, what will be the balance so uh, always if if there is acidosis means h plus is increases increasing what will the lung do lung will exhale more carbon dioxide there will be hyperventilation and what will the kidney do kidney will excrete more h plus and in the response it will reabsorb more bicarbonate ions so this is the only thing which we need to apply in all cases of acidosis and uh, alkalosis uh, so the last topic in the chapter is anion gap anion gap uh, so first of all we need to understand uh that concentration of anion and cations must be equal to maintain electrical neutrality thus there must be no gap in the plasma however uh, normally in the clinical practice we take sodium as a cation and chloride and bicarbonate as an anion so therefore there will be some anion gap so which will be cation minus me sare anion that is 
12 milli equivalent per liter okay so clinically acid base status can be diagnosed by assessing the difference between the concentration of cations and the concentration of anions in the plasma which is known as anion gap uh, so now see anion gap is cation minus anion right so if there is decrease in the plasma concentration of unmeasured cations so uh, normally what happens cation is equal to anion right so uh, in cations we take sodium we measure sodium and these are the unmeasured cations uh, so now see uh, the total quantity of cations must remain same uh, so for example let's take total quantity of cation is 100 cations and sodium is 50 cations and other cations unmeasured cations are 50 so now what happens there is decrease in uh, concentration of un unmeasured cations so let's say uh, that unmeasured cations become 20 so sodium has to become 80 right so anion gap in anion gap what happen if they decrease sodium will increase so means uh, this cation uh, this value will increase so if this will increase the whole anion gap will increase so suppose it happens in the anion gap uh, it decrease when there is increase in cations